32 inch TVs. This is the Sony 32W8 or W800. Check below in the description, I'll put timestamps of important events like measuring where those stupid feet are and things like that. Top of the box, you can see we've got a foot and another foot. So they're the pedestal feet or stand, figure eight mains lead, quick setup guide and remote control. Instruction book pack with travel A batteries. That is the TV itself. With some protective bits of cardboard and polythene on the front. The TV from the front. The side, a bit of a thick one. And the back. Included accessories, instruction book pack for the AAA batteries in it. Figure eight mains lead, straight connection to the TV. The supplied Bluetooth remote control. Looking at the remote control close up, on off button, microphone there if we choose to use it for voice command, channel numbers, information button, teletext if available where you are, free view play, Netflix, Disney and Prime Video shortcuts, coloured buttons for different apps and media playback, guide button, record list if you've been recording to the TV, that's your voice command button, the Google symbol, input or source button, shortcut to the settings, cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter, back button, home menu for the home screen, TV, so you can map that to one of the HDMI's if you use a PVR for your TV viewing, or TV can take you to terrestrial or freesat if you choose that. Volume up and down, channels up and down, that will skip you between the two channels you've been toggling between. Mute button, audio, subtitles, help, play, pause, fast forward, rewind, record. So if we're doing media playback or on and out, we can pause, play, fast forward. Exit to exit out. Flip it over and the whole thing slides off. So push down there, comes away. Travel A batteries into the back. Quick look at the setup guide. Shows you there obviously taking it out of the box. Don't squeeze the screen. Try and put your hands under it and so on so there's no pressure on there. It is delicate. Bits included in the top. Two of you to lift if possible. 32 so you're probably safe for that. Lay it down on a large flat surface to attach those feet. Pick it up carefully with a friend if you've got one. If you haven't got any friends you'll be here like me all night. Inside. List of the connections on the side. Interestingly it says it's got a headphone socket so we could use that for analog audio output if we've got an old amplifier as well. CI card slot reader, where to insert your mains, AC cord. ARC port there for ARC devices, so audio return channel to control your AV receiver or soundbar. Showing the audio video inputs and outputs, different connections, what they can be used for, USB hard drive recording, etc. Then popping your batteries in, turning it on help button if needed. These are the supplied feet or pedestal stands, so we'll just get those out of the bags. We've got the screw pack there, so some machine screws to attach the feet to the TV. Bit of thread lock on them. Simple bits of sort of dark grey or even black brush effect plastic there. And they do have L and R marked on, so left and right to correspond to the TV and also your through holes for the screws to go through. TV now laid on a large flat surface using the box in a polythene bag. It's marked R and L if it shows up there for the corresponding feet. So that one's marked R. You can see there where this part locates in our two threaded holes. So simply there, then two screws. Wind those in quickly. Same on that side, again, locates into that slotted part there. These feet are lined with metal for strength, just a plastic cover. Rubber on the base of them as well, so it won't slip and slide and scratch your table. Looking at our connections on the back, digital optical audio out, USB 500 milliamps, wide internet, ethernet connection, 
satellite, so free sat or free to view sat, terrestrial aerial connection, HDMI's two and three here. Now looking at the inputs on the side, I'll just get closer. You can see we've got the CI card slot reader there, half amp USB there, wired headphone socket or analog audio out, and HDMI one, which is audio return channel, ARC. Connections that side, the other one this side is that AC in. While well, we've got it down here, the only other thing, we do have a button there that we can use for turning on and off and cycling through some bits, but use the remote control, it's easier. Onto the dimensions, most critical is probably the width of this pedestal stand, so at its widest part, just over 44 and a half centimeters or just over 17 and a half inches. Depth for those feet, I'd say about 18 centimeters or seven and a quarter inches. To be fair, it's narrower than some of the feet are on some TV. Some are right at the end, so it's almost sensible. Height for the bottom of the TV, if I include this bit of chrome here, two and a half centimeters gap from the bottom to there or one inch. To the top of the TV, 46 and a half centimeters or 18 and a quarter inches. Width across the top, just over 73 centimeters or 28 and three quarter inches. Thickness of it at its thickest point, I make about 78, 79 millimeters, which is about three and one eighth of an inch. Looking at the back, it's got a pretty stupid visa mount on because it's not square. So it makes it awkward for some of the arm brackets if you want it across the corner. There are brackets or adapt plates you could maybe use to suit it. Uh, but why they do it on quite a few of the Sony TVs, I find it stupid, but 100 mil by 200 mil M6 bolts to fit that in. So again, 100 mil by 200 mil Visa mount. From the bottom of the TV, I'm excluding that bit of chrome at the front so that dips down, but it's about 120 millimeters from the bottom to the center of the first Visa mount hole. I'm now Powered up the TV, connected wide internet aerial mains and HDMI from my Sky Q box. So, English. Connecting using Ethernet, thank you very much. Okay, so if you do have a Google account, sign in, you'll need it to go to the App Store anyway. If you don't, make one, it should only take five minutes. I'm gonna skip, this is in store. I'll accept terms of service. Did you know? A few more, okay. So you can choose whatever here, location, or diagnostic reports of crashes send into them. That's up to you. So I'm gonna skip the voice control for me as it's in store. But at home, you may find it useful. A lot of my older customers will use it to search YouTube and so on. So they can say YouTube gardening tips, whatever, and it proves quite useful to them. Uh, so it does work quite well. Skip. Set up assistant later. Following apps pre-install. So I'm not really interested in Red Bull TV. Continue. Powered by Android TV, thank you very much. Apps from Google Play, Google Assistant, Castia TV. So you can cast to it, should be able to mirror your iPhone as well. UK. Accept. Pop in a password for later setups, etc. Four zeros is not a valid password, however, you can have four ones. Okay, I'm going to set it up for home. Power saving mode I'm turning off. That will adjust the brightness, all that sort of stuff and turn off over an activity. So I'm going to say off. Chromecast built in always available. That's so you can trigger it by standby to turn it off. I'm going to say off for that. Tuner mode, I'm going antenna. I've got an aerial connected. So I'm just going to say only digital channels. And we'll come back in five minutes when that's finished tuning.
Okay, tuning is finished, back in the room. Pick the region where your antenna is facing. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm waiting it for it to organize any duplicates and put the region selected to the front. Channels installed, next. Satellite installation, I'll skip because I don't have that connected. Next. So pair the Bluetooth for the remote control, we say pair. So it says hold volume key, then press the microphone key for three seconds. And I think that says, is it volume key minus and the microphone key? So orange lights flashing on the remote. Oh, just waiting for that to pair. That's now popped up, I can click on there, select pairing. That's the remote paired. Okay, setup is completed. I would say setup is complete, enjoy. Finish. Okay, finish. So we have got a SkyQ box connected. It's not asked about it yet. I'm pretty sure it's turned on. Uh, so I'm going to go straight to SkyQ. Just to see a bit of normal TV. Okay, so a quick look at the news for a bit of normal TV. Liverpool say they're disappointed the report was leaked to the media before it was officially released. The supporters' reaction saves lives, first and foremost, but then also secondly that UEFA, the French authorities, have got so many questions to answer, and it'll take some time to get those answers. There's no fault on the Liverpool fans at all. They just queued up, waited, and as we were coming out the ground, they wouldn't even open the gates. We had to lift a girl in a wheelchair over the gates. It's disgraceful. The French authorities, UEFA, are disgraceful. We know what happened, and we'll keep explaining it. There's no... The idea of a leak that's going to make it difficult for Liverpool supporters, please. We will keep telling our story. We'll keep being crystal clear about what happened. There is no, nothing for me in the idea of a malicious leak. Well, okay, just going to check the pitch settings, make sure I'm on standard mode. Despite being 2 0 dead at half time, Falkers yeah, standard the there. I've gone on to normal BBC the Two the there. Just so we can see standard definition now, I'm going to go on to 102, same channel but in HD through the Freeview Tuner. Government have not proven to be of any real use in this situation, and of course anger at the slow speed of the initial response. And certainly we got a strong flavour of that over the weekend. So again, in one of the worst Freeview HD there, BBC here. Two. Going to flick over to standard definition, normal BBC Two, see the difference. Prepare meals on a grand scale. Probably not the best demo for it, but those who are homeless or too frightened to go back into crumbling flats. At the centre of it all, a professor from Istanbul. A natural organizer. So standard def actually looks quite good on these, to be honest. But it is a smaller TV. Left by a government stunned by the camp. One, oh, two. Come here and to help the people because so, again, immediately sharper. That's what I noticed in my eyes. Don't know how that translates on camera. Quick look at the TV guide. So if I press the guide button. When you go to rescue area, you, you know, comes up free view play. Is so if you've signed in all your app accounts, you can rewind stuff from there, the or there get it on demand. Many, Anything many, with that symbol, you can get on demand or start again. We've got Newsnight there, or I can go backwards on the guide. 
very few at that moment. So if I wanted Rick Stein's totally Cornwall down I mean, BBC Two, I would click on there, still, provided I've signed into BBC iPlayer, that will start me off the at the start of the show. Uh, again, can go up and down the list and, the and look at the other channels, or I can use the channel up and down button to page up and down there. If I've got a hard drive or USB stick connected, I can set recording schedules there Although and record programs to that device as well. Filmed, if I want to exit the guide, I can just press back and I'm out back to live to TV. So I'll turn the sound up just so we can hear it. From many of the worst hit. Head north and you see signs of a movement that's been going on for the past week. Millions are heading out and the cost of rebuilding lost homes is estimated at six billion dollars. So the economic and political repercussions will be profound. A thousand kilometers away in Istanbul, the grief okay. and initial shock we'll try a retail is demo. Way to a consideration for the disaster. Okay, so I'm just loading up YouTube now so I can look at Sony retail demo on it, see what it looks like. With some decent content. Just going to exit there, back to live TV. Where the President Erdogan is heading for defeat. Absolutely. Our people have been going through a lot of pain. There is serious injustice in my country. Democracy has been curtailed here. So, I'm just going to turn that down. Quick look at the home menu. Obviously, I haven't signed into a Gmail account, so probably not all there in full, but across the top. Netflix, Prime, iPlayer, ITV, Hub, All4, My5, YouTube, Google Play Movies and TV, Disney Plus, and I can add other apps to the favourite. Also, to the left and down, we can go to the App Store there and get more apps if we've signed in. What's on now, Freeview Play, highlights from Netflix, iPlayer, ITV, All4, and other smart apps further down below. So, all in all, for a 32 inch, it is, it's probably one of the best pictures I've seen on a 32 recently. I'll do a side by side with the LG because I noticed it was quite a lot sharper than the LG. Uh, a lot more detail on it. Sounds decent as well. These are 299 in the UK with a five year warranty. So it's not the cheapest 32. You can pick some up at, I don't know, 170 pounds or so. But if you want quality 32, I'd say that's the one. Apart from the stupid visa on the back, but that is all for now. Whoosh.